Welcome, folks. Uh, what a cool video that was. That is Spot, a robot in action working the construction job site, and who will be the star of our show today. My name is uh, Sanji Dillon from ProCore Technologies, where we are on a mission to improve the lives of everyone in construction. And I'm super excited to be the host today for another live episode of, our, of How We Build Now video series. If you can, please share this broadcast with the network so others can join as well. Uh, today, we'll be deep in, uh, diving deep with three of our brightest minds when it comes to robotics and construction. They are part of a fantastic collaboration that deployed Spot at construction job sites and are made up of Boston Dynamics, the creators of Spot, Pomelo, one of Canada's largest construction companies and a valued ProCo client. Yes, we love them. And Hollow Builder, also a ProCo partner on the cutting edge of visual documentation. So I'm just going to bring my guests into view. Also, Brian, I'll start with you. If you can introduce yourself, uh, your company, and what your uh, collaboration is in this whole process. Yeah, for sure. Um, my name is Brian Ringley. I'm the Construction Technology Manager for Boston Dynamics. Um, I work directly with our architecture, engineering, construction, and real estate customers um, to figure out how Spot is adding value to their applications. Um, and then I also coordinate our pilot programs where customers test new integrations with the Spot SDK, as is the case here with Hollow Builder and their SpotWalk product uh, being tested with Pomerlo. That's awesome. I'll uh, move on to you, Christian, if you want to introduce yourself. Yeah, hi, my name is Christian Kloff. I'm the CMO and Head of Partnerships here at Hollow Builder. I've been with a great team for about five years, three years of which I was in product management. I recently joined marketing and partnership, and the partnership piece of that allows me to work very closely uh, with the folks over at Boston Dynamics to build the integration between Holo Builder and Boston Dynamics. Holo Builder itself is a construction uh, progress management solution for GCs, engineering firms, and owners to document and communicate the job site in 360 degree. Um, the industry basically calls us a Google Street View for construction. Uh, right. Our customers, such as Pomelo, capture the job site progress with a 360 camera. Uh, okay. That then enables remote site access, being able to see the site from afar and also have a solid progress record of the site's progress. And traditionally, that data is captured uh, with a person walking the field capturing, but then most recently also with Spot. And I'm very much looking forward to be chatting about this today. That's awesome. And uh, last but not least, uh, is Mr. Isaac from Pomelo. Yeah, so Isaac uh, Charbonneau Beaulieu. Uh, I'm an innovation manager for Pomerlo. So Pomerlo is a general contractor in Canada. Uh, we're working coast to coast. Um, and as an innovation manager, right now I am uh, in charge of the robotic um, development at Pomerlo, which includes uh, Boston Dynamic robots with Spot and other nice improvements we're testing right now. Awesome. So yeah, so let's uh, thank you so much, uh, gentlemen, for joining me. Uh, it's very exciting what you're doing and uh, of great interest to the audience today. So uh, before we dig into the collaboration, I thought uh, let's kick it off with the elephant in the room. And I'll start with uh, Brian, as you must get this question a lot, a lot I would imagine. So are, ro are robots going to take our jobs? How do you turn this around for folks? What is fueling the need for robotics and construction? Maybe you can uh, take us uh, from there. Yeah, no, no, I don't. I don't think there's any danger like that. Um, what we've really been focusing on is, you know, first of all, going to customer sites and speaking with with people on site about what is a challenge for them and how robots can can augment what they're trying to do. And what we're finding that you know is that data collection is considered to be a fairly low level task and and kind of a distraction for a lot of these field professionals who, who really need to be doing a lot of other things like staging the site, managing the trades, et cetera. And, and kind of beyond that is there simply isn't the capacity um, for these workers to collect data really at the, at the frequency and the quality and the repeatability that would be required um, to drive really meaningful value downstream with some of these emerging kind of platforms and algorithms like, like what you see with AI in hollow builder so i think you know first and foremost we're trying to you know relieve some of these these workers for higher value tasks um but right. we're also trying to kind of then progress from there and accomplish things that simply that simply weren't possible that simply weren't being done um with existing workforce structures makes sense it's a tough question, but uh, Isaac, I was going to go to you and, uh, you know, what's yeah. your take on this? You know, I'm, I can imagine what is what are the reactions when uh, Spot hit the job site? So you're bringing it in and, and have people changed their minds since then? Yeah, I think just like to move with like what Brian would just said, 
Uh, this is exactly like the way right now. We have a labor shortage. I mean, Palmer Lowe is like in the biggest recruitment campaign of his history, and like we're having issues getting people on board. Um, the, the, the market like doesn't have like where we don't have any any near any uh, uh, as much people as we'd like to have. So right now. Um, so yeah, when we brought the robot on site, at first, like, it's all, always the same reaction, like, yeah, they're going to steal our job. But then, like, as soon as they see what they're doing, they're like, okay, no, it's like, it's a, it's a compliment to what, what they're already doing. And like, we're just able to go a little farther. And like, eventually people just realize that they're going to have like better jobs, meaning that they don't like have like the, let's say, non added value job. Uh, they have. You're now like uh, doing some very interesting stuff now uh, with the data that it's collecting instead of having to collect the data. So that's uh, that's a very plus value for everybody. So I mean now people are are seeing spot on site and like they don't react anymore. I mean it's like business as usual. Yeah, that's all right. That's the dog that's going along for his ride. So and I think that's something that happens with all technology. Like you know we're just looking at it differently just because it's got legs. But uh, I like the idea that humans will do more high value, right? And uh, there's such a uh, labor shortage, so I totally agree with you, and I'm glad that Pomelo folks are all behind it. Uh, so yourself, Christian, how do you, uh, you know, you know, what do you, what's your take on people's fear of robotics, and also what's the potential for it, if you can share with us? Yeah, absolutely. People get used to spot much quicker than I thought. Uh, so at first, it really makes a big impression on you. Um, it's like uh, when you were a kid and you saw an excavator for the very first time. Uh, it's it's really impressive. But then the second time you see it, you may be bothered to take another photo of it. But then after that, it's really just another tool. And it's it's not not really not as scary as people think. Um, the people usually capturing the field are field engineers that in addition to the job that they typically do, like managing risk in the field and what they're great at, go out and take photos uh, in addition to, to that. And allowing them to be more efficient with their time, having an effective tool to help them do that uh, more efficiently uh, right. makes them very excited. And the FEs we work with so far who um, are capturing and now basically man managers of spot, if you want, uh, th they really see this as, as a huge potential for them to be more efficient with their time. Uh, it's just another tool in the, in the field, really. Yeah, and that's what we're trying to, you know, uh, uh, you know, discover today and get uh, alley people's fears around this. But uh, Brian, if I could just uh, come back to you on this, because you know, stationary robots are pretty much commonplace for the longest time in manufacturing facilities. You know, we're warming up to autonomous cars, which are kind of like a robot. Um, so, Mike, and you know, the, your robot has legs, and that's I think uh, people have something about legs and you know, being humanistic, uh, you know, like animals. So. My question is why legs? And maybe you can share some of the backstory in brief, please. Yeah, I mean, you know, before Boston Dynamics was founded as a company, this research actually started with our now chairman, Mark Raber, uh, in the leg lab, which was initially at Carnegie Mellon in the 80s and then moved to MIT before kind of spinning out into a private company. So, you know, this is research that's 30 years in the making um, in terms of dynamic robots with legs. And, you know, the early thinking was just that, you know, half of the world is really not accessible to wheeled or tracked vehicles. Wow. Um, so, you know, how can we look to natural evolution to kind of understand other ways to, to get automation and to get these valuable tools into the rest of the world? So now with Spot um, and its particular form factor for industrial and, and construction sites, the goal is to bring automation, bring useful practical automation into human purposed environments. So we're not talking about warehouses or factories where you really have to kind of explicitly design the facility for the automation, but we're saying, you know, these are, these are spaces that have been designed for, for a long time just for humans, but we're still going to be able to bring um, these valuable tools into these environments. And that's really, you know, legs have, have been the way to do that. And it's, you know, everything from the ability to step over and around, you know, obstacles, including dynamic moving obstacles, um, the ability to go to up and down stairs. Um, it, it's all been important in extending autonomy um, into these areas. It's just incredible, you know, what you've achieved, like, you know, how it moves around and we'll get more into the capabilities of Spot later. But uh, thank you for sharing your uh, sharing those uh, thoughts and insights about uh, robotics and how they they uh, play their part in construction and our, our, our future role with them. And we've got to get comfortable with all that. So let's move to the next topic, uh, which is how the collaboration came about between Boston Dynamics, Pomelo and Holobuilder. 
uh, that's so spot at construction job sites. They're actually on job sites. This is real. So uh, Christian, I'll start with you because my understanding is Haldo Builder led this initiative. Uh, so just uh, perhaps uh, share the backstory on how this came about. Yeah, I, actually the credit uh, goes to a customer of ours who, who started and kicked this all off. Um, a very large engineering firm was in touch with both Boston Dynamics and Holo Builder, and we've been working with them for quite some time before that. And they said, well, you guys have this great job walk app that allows you to capture the job site. And these guys, they have this great robot uh, that you can put basically anything on top of. So why don't you take your job walk app and spot and make a spot walk app? And then we just went ahead and, and did this. <laughs> when we kicked off the collaboration in, in 2018, it was pretty clear that there is benefit of having this ultimate capture machine that just can repetitively capture exactly the same spot over time and have the data in a structure that is still uh, very accurate and even more accurate than it could be done by a human. So that was a, a great thesis to kind of start out with. Um, and also for the Boston Dynamics team, it, it was good to have an enterprise ready platform that you can use when having the data uh, from day one that then the customers as an end user can start using the, the data in a collaborative platform and make use of having that captured information. Nice. Um, Isaac, I'll, uh, let me go next to you. How did uh, Pomelo come to decide to participate in this collaboration? And how excited were you? <laughs> I know you're a big time uh, tech guy. When you and uh, you know, Pomelo agreed to participate. Yeah, so it started with uh, Eric Lessard, our CTO. Uh, he was uh, in contact with Boston Dynamic. He's been in contact with them for a couple of years now. Um, and I've been pushing in like, like every time we had a new video from Boston Dynamic, I was like getting all excited and say, Eric, Eric, we need to do something with this. Like, come on, let's let's do something and everything. And then finally, like it came like uh, at the end of last year, uh, like it was finally possible to do something. And like, I, I was ecstatic. I mean, seeing what are the possibilities with all of this. And uh, the, the same with Hello Builder. I mean, for us, it was like natural, let's say, evolution as we were already using Hello Builder. So it was like pushing it one step forward. So, no, I was I was crazy when I when I heard that we were going to be able to work with them. And because I mean, Pomerlo as um, as a general contractor, we're always trying to push a collaboration with the, all our our partners in the industry. Because I mean. Our mission, because I'm in the innovation department at Tomorrow, and our mission is to, together we influence, together we transform the industry. So that, that means like it's all based on the together. So we're not going to do it by ourselves. We really need to go and partner with people that do some great stuff and then push it like as much as we can with them. Uh, and then try to put some other people in board and like because construction by itself is is a pretty static industry for a couple of decades now so we're trying to push them as much as we can so th this was kind of a natural evolution for us to be able to that, partner with um, them brian so we'll move on to you what's your part here and uh there are going to be some folks in the audience who are interested in this robotic technology um do you have a program pilot that companies can uh, participate in or are you now commercially available uh can you share some details on this and what are the various ways new customers can get uh, engaged yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, first and foremost, uh, we actually offer the robot for direct sale to customers um, at shop.bostondynamics.com, which I think is pretty cool to have e-commerce for legged robots. Um, yeah. Um, but we also understand that, you know, when customers are looking to, you know, disrupt the way they work and, and work with new technologies like this, that they want a closer partnership. And they want to know that we're just invested in their ROI as they are. So we've developed an early adopter program um, that's that's a that's a lease program that also comes with some kind of regular face to face meetings and and ways of collaborating to track an ROI hypothesis over the course of that. So any you know we're still running that. The you know to to be clear, the construction environment is probably the most one of the most challenging environments on earth for. For robots to navigate um you know there's a lot of activity a lot of dynamics going on in that environment and the environment itself is temporary and is changing over time so you know there's a lot of value in us learning from these customers and and being on site with them whether that's virtually or, or physically pre-covid um and as part of that too you know we recognize that just just dropping a robot onto a construction site is not going to add value 
in and of itself. This was really the driving force behind the SDK that we offer. So we have a public SDK for Spot. Um, and, you know, to Hollow Builder's credit, uh, they actually kind of got on board even before the SDK was finished. Um, you know, they were so, so eager to, to push the product out. But that's how we add value on a construction site is to say we have this mobility platform that can get, you know, your favorite sensor to any location in your environment to get information that is meaningful and valuable to you. And then that gets uploaded to the cloud um, to a particular application that's able to provide some kind of greater insight as is the case with Hollow Builder. Um, so, and we're, you know, still running this too. So people who are interested in, in testing the SpotWalk technology, for example, are, are more than welcome to reach out to me on, on LinkedIn um, at my account. Thank you, Brian. Uh, lots of uh, good information for folks out there who wanna maybe try out this technology, uh, reach out to Brian for sure. But uh, just want to check in, uh, how's the collaboration coming along? The last time I checked, you all very chummy with each other. Uh, are you best friends? Um, but yeah, in, in reviewing your collaboration efforts, uh, what makes a great partnership in a case like this where innovation is involved? Sure, yeah. I mean, you know, constant communication has been the most important thing in my mind. You know, I, I've really suffered, to be honest, from not being able to actually be on the construction site um, with Isaac. That's how we launched this. And, you know, it was really great to actually be there with the team. Um, it was very cold. Um, <laughs> uh, Montreal but, in January, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was that was fun. Um, but you know, we've we've continued that you know the best we can remotely. That that's really where we're at, and and also to clearly articulate you know for for Isaac and his team, what is the ROI hypothesis? You know, anything from kind of the direct obvious ROI of labor hour savings relative to the amount and quality of data collected um, to kind of secondary ROI, which is, you know, once we have that data organized and consolidated in a platform like Hollow Builder, what are all the ways that we can leverage that for additional value? And, and to just make sure that we're all parties are coming to the table, you know, week after week to say, where are we at with this? Um, and still very much a work in progress. Thank you, Brian. Uh, some great insight there. Christian, uh, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, yeah, especially when it comes around innovation projects, having having the right players, first of all, around the table is is key. Uh, in, in this case, uh, it, it's great working with Isaac and his team. As, as you, uh, Sanjeev, also pointed out, the Pomelo team is really great at innovation um, and they, they really know uh, how to work with early products. So that, that was really good. And our other early adopters of this technology as well. And then uh, Boston Dynamics, obviously, having a product that is... Uh, beyond anything else that is out there in the world uh, is, is very, very helpful. And, and then it comes down to transparency, communicating what, uh, what works, communicating what doesn't work yet, and then setting out a, a roadmap and expectations, very, very important, um, yeah. so that one can work together and improve it um, together. And uh, especially in, in a case like this, where sky is really the limit, where there's so much possibility. Um, I mean, anyone that ever managed a roadmap, right, it's all about uh, seeing okay, prioritizing. Um, so that that really, I think, makes makes for a great um, great partnership when it comes to innovation like that. And yeah, we we liked uh, having been the the first to play around with this uh, with, with this integration and and really excited. I mean, the team and uh, not not me at, at all, but the engineers at, at Holobuilder have been having a lot of fun with the engineers over at Boston Dynamics to kind of lay the foundation uh, of of probably what will be a standard now for these uh, integrations moving forward, which, which is just really satisfying and, and motivating for any engineer to work on something like that as well. And talking about not only software engineers, but also civil engineers. So it's just great, a uh, great bunch of uh, people uh, like uh, getting together in order to solve these problems, which is, which is great to see. Christian, I just gotta say, I, I love your passion. I mean, it's so cool. It's just what makes this collaboration uh, so cool because they're folks like yourself and your team who are building in the background and uh, everyone feels like they're heading to this one goal, you know, to, to make innovation happen. So thank you. Um, over to you, Isaac, what are your thoughts um, on this? The key for us is like, just to be open about like what the reality of each other. I mean, we understand that each has his own like goal maybe, but we have to bring to a common goal and then like, what's the reality? So what, 
are you facing as a challenge? What could you do? What can you know? so, and then like always keep the communication going. I mean, if I keep for myself the comments, I'm not going to go anywhere. So I should better just like shoot all the comments I have, give them everything I can. So like in the end, it's just going to get better. I mean, it's uh, that that's part of being in a pilot project. So that's kind of once again, it's all about collaboration. So we have to just and. It's, it's being on the same page. I mean, that's the first thing. Uh, we have to agree to a common goal, and then like, let's let's move on and do whatever we can. Like, and I, as you said, like it's it's never as straightforward as we think it's going to be. And we're developing internally some stuff you, sometimes, and like it's always the same. Like we do have a goal, but it's the road may be like a little. Uh, it it not be straight as we think it's going to be. <laughs> let's let's say it this way. So yeah, it's like being open about what's going on and usually it all works fine, so. Thank you, Isaac. Uh, you know, one of the things I really admire about Pommel is your uh, culture of innovation. You know, how you're always looking to try new ways, you know, whenever I go anywhere uh, out there on events, you know, Pommel is always sharing what they're doing with BIM, with Lean, you know, it's always trying to lift the industry just like so, so many other firms. So this collaboration is also, you know, part of that and it's in the spirit of what you guys, or what is built in your culture. So thank you for uh, sharing. I wanted to uh, get to the economics and viability of robotics on construction sites, especially along the lines of uh, return on investment. I know, uh, Brandy, just touched on it a little bit. But, uh, you know, in sales, they're saying, and I like that it has a construction twist to it. Oh, wow. And it's that uh, you're not selling a drill, you're selling holes. Uh, so what are the holes here? Uh, or in other words, the benefits that robotics brings to the table for a construction firm to invest in? If you can uh, maybe address that, uh, Brian. That's absolutely the right question to ask and something that, you know, we want to set clear expectations with the customer. It's it's very cool to have a spot, but that's, you know, we, we are eager to get beyond that phase and to really show how useful this robot is. So, yeah, the, the whole, so to speak, is is this idea of there's the kind of obvious direct ROI and then the downstream indirect ROI. So initially, you know, the, the industry has just been talking for, years about this need for better data collection. And, and that's that's kind of where the industry suffers. If you want to track things like project overruns, cost overruns, et cetera, a lot of it just comes back to the basic fact that there, there isn't really a great mechanism by which data can be collected in near real time to make better decisions from and better tracking from from all stakeholders. So that's the initial problem is, you know, providing a generic mobility solution that's actually able to move through your space and collect that data. And that's where I think we've been really successful kind of out of the gates. But you know, at risk of just pushing that bottleneck further downstream, you have to have a way to process all of that data. And I think what the industry is realizing is, oh, our systems aren't real, our construction management, BIM systems, et cetera, they're not really designed for this level of real world data and feedback. You know, That's what we want, it's, it's obvious. So we actually have to rethink the entire workflow, um, the entire value stream. And again, we, we can't just inject a robot into the workflow and expect there to be value. We have to have the robot plus some kind of downstream application that's able to make sense of all this data that is, it is now possible for the first time to collect. Um, so, you know, enter Hollow Builder, where, you know, that's really what they've been trying to do. But now we're, we're giving that mechanism for, for greater automated data collection to, to reduce that labor required to do it and make it possible. You're, you're not going to care that you used a robot or you collected images or a point cloud. You're just going to get, you're going to care that like the subs got paid on time and that everybody agreed on the amount of work completion and that you were able to stage the site properly for the next day that so the wrong people didn't show up and you didn't waste time. You know, all of those things. There are so many things that, that stand to improve from, from just better tracking of job site progress. Thank you, uh, Brian. Christian, so you're in visual documentation. Um, how does robotics up the game from your point of view to justify investment in robotics? Yeah, the ROI for GCs like Pomelo, engineering firms, owners, really comes from having that data and being able to work with that data and improve existing workflows with that captured information, um, which then enables you to see a site remotely rather than going there. So reducing travel time, which especially during COVID obviously is very, very appealing as travel is more restricted. Uh, and also by not needing to have people in the field necessarily that are not there to put any work in place and that are only 
virtually seeing it. Uh, so quite a few of the uh, job site visits can be replaced by seeing it virtually in this case. So that's where ROI comes from. And then as Brian mentioned, ROI in terms of making sure that the payment and invoicing systems just work uh, smoother uh, by being based on the latest updates from the field on an ongoing basis, having a solid as built documentation that then stakeholders can use of and improve collaboration between owners, architects, contractors, where you put the job site, you know, on a screen share, like, like we do in this kind of zoom call or, or in a meeting room, put it on the wall to really discuss what the field looks like. So that's kind of where the ROI comes from. The goal really is to reduce the effort and time you need in order to capture the data in the field. And we've been on this journey uh, ever since Holo Builder was started in 2016. We found that we, we kind of came up with this job walk application where you have a mobile application, you locate yourself in the field, uh, that takes a 360 photo and it organizes it all at the same time, which really saves 80% already. And that's what most of our customers use today. Then we speed it up even more with speed mode, which is basically using all the sensors on the phone, including the camera lens to make an AR map of the actual construction site to know where you are, even in a non-GPS enabled environment. That's speeded up again by 50%. And then now robotics, as, as also Isaac and, and Brian will probably know, is just the logical next step in order to make this capture workflow even faster and uh, allowing it to happen more frequently. So getting updates not just once a week, which we typically see our customers schedule frequency be, but instead getting it once a day or even twice a day. So that's really where that ROI comes from and, and where it's worth. Appreciate the insight, Christian. Um, moving on to uh, Isaac, uh, what are your thoughts on this? And uh, also, what are the other use cases you see for robotics outside visual documentations now that you've had a chance to uh, uh, you know, see it in action observe it what are the other um, cases we can use during construction yeah what we're, we're seeing right now is that like um boston dynamic and old builder is kind of the first step and then we see that we're going to be able to add more sensors to this uh to this setup let's say so like uh, 3d scans and then being able to link all this together with like maybe old builder or others and then like be able to bring all the data together and i don't know like be able to track uh, the progress way better than what we're doing right now. Uh, I mean, so this, this is kind of like where we're seeing where it's going right now with this kind of robotic, uh, I'll call it let's say mobile robotic. Um, cause, cause for us, robotic is also involves, uh, like uh, for push application, for example, we want to see robotic involved in on this side. Also, it's not only on the job sites. Um, I mean, because all the people re remove from the job sites and make it work them elsewhere is going to be safer for them. Uh, that's the reality. I mean, the less people you have it in job site and the safer it's going to be. Uh, that's obvious. And it's even more obvious now with the COVID situation, like the less people we have in contact, the better it is. Um, so that's a great opportunity. So for us, that's kind of like where we see robotic coming in. So it's, it's just removing maybe people from some part of the job and putting them elsewhere or they're going to be much safer. So that's also what's involved with uh, all this robotic, uh, robotic stuff. Thank you. That is all uh, great information. Let's move uh, to the next topic, which is uh, to step back. I just want to go behind the scenes as to how you initiate and perhaps decide on what you're measuring, the parameters, how you define success. Uh, to move to the next step. So without getting into details, which may be proprietary in your case, uh, perhaps you can share with us uh, your different angles in terms of how Spot was deployed as you have different viewpoints. So maybe I'll start uh, with you, Brian. Uh, you know, What can you share on this aspect of the collaboration? Is it about improving the products and its capabilities, for example? Uh, some insight would be great, thanks. Well, yeah, I mean, we do, we have learned a lot from customers and we're able to structure these engagements um, a little bit, uh, I think, based on that experience. So, you know, we want the customers to have quick wins out of the box and we also want to set it up for kind of incremental value add because it can be overwhelming to introduce something like a robot into the job site and try to achieve everything at once. So we have these kind of proof of concept gateways that the customer begins with. It's, you know, testing mobility, on the job site, you know, that's usually, you know, successful within 15 minutes, ideally. Um, and then moving on to autonomy. So testing the auto walk application uh, that was mentioned previously, 
where you record a mission, which is a sequence of, of waypoints and then actions that can be um, performed at those waypoints, such as 360 capture, laser scanning, et cetera. Um, and my cat really wants to get in the picture right now. Um, and then, and then moving, moving on into applications development. So, you know, the attaching of, of your favorite sensor device using our SDK to connect that to auto walk so it can be triggered autonomously. The really nice thing about pilot programs like Hollow Builder Spot Walk is they took care of that for us. Um, they built that. That's a ready to deploy tool. The customer saves time there. Um, and, you know, a few other aspects that might be interesting to the customer, such as teleoperation using their job site network. And then after that, you know, it's really about saying, how do we get this out of the innovation group and into the hands of the project professionals? You know, who's actually going to be using this on a daily basis? Whose life does this robot need to make easier to show value in this organization and scale with this organization? Right. So that's, that's when we move into the kind of uh, site-specific, um, I would say, pilot deployment, where you're really testing the robot every day with the end users who would be using this technology, making sure that it fits within their workflows, getting feedback from them, um, and then kind of responding with additional features and developments. Um, Christian, if I can uh, move on to you on this topic. Uh, yeah, absolutely. The nice thing is that with Holobuilder, we, we have 18,000 plus projects, construction sites that have been using Holobuilder before. Um, so we have a really good data set of what happens from day to day on the normal capture, uh, where um, that what 99% what of our customers are using uh, 360 camera, uh, walking the field and it being automatically documented and, and time stamped and location based. Uh, now, with, with Spotwalk, uh, we really want to see an increase in frequency of site capture and an increase in accuracy on the location that we spoke about. So these okay. are really the two things that, that we are really looking at um, with, with Spotwalk. It's nice to have this large data set to compare to, for sure. Awesome. And uh, Isaac, yourself? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so far what we've seen is, is pretty incredible. I mean... Uh... As everybody else, we saw the video, and then it, it may be a little different on a job site, seeing like how clear it can be and, and stuff like that. But it, it is so much capable; it, it doesn't make sense. I mean, it's it's pretty crazy. I mean, I was on a job site the other day, and like it's a job site where there's some slab on grades that are like ten inches uh, thick or two hundred and fifty millimeters uh, thick, and then like the robot just like walks like if nothing's nothing happens, it just like goes straight on, doesn't even like slow down anything, and then you get like the new guy on a job site that never saw a spot before. It was like it was like what what did just happen? Like that that's pretty crazy. So like it, it is so capable. So for us, that's kind of a big plus. Because depending on the job sites, um, those abilities are very important for us. So that's where like it, we have to take that into account. Because we could have some like robot that would like be very good at like capturing the data and going to some points, but it, it would not be good on job sites where like the conditions are pretty harsh and like it's uneven terrain. Because as as Palmer always a general contractor, but we're across all different like um, sectors. So from civil works to um, buildings and stuff like that. So it has to be able to be like everywhere, very heavy duty and being able to go across multiple obstacles. So that's kind of where like for us, like there's a big plus value uh, of using this kind of technology. Okay, awesome. Thanks for sharing that uh, aspect of it. Uh, I just wanted to move on to uh, product roadmaps and capabilities of Spot. Uh, so Brian, I'll start with you because you're the creator of Spot. Uh, and uh, if everyone can just chime in after, is Spot the real deal? <laughs> you know, a job site is a hostile environment uh, with so many obstacles that make safety the biggest issue for industry. So how is uh, Spot adopting, adapting and how capable is it? How does it differ from other competitors? I'll give you that chance to put yourself up. Yeah, um, yeah, show me show me a competitor on a job site and you know we'll we'll talk but i you know <laughs> we're actually happy to see the the competitors the up and coming competitors as well it really validates the the marketplace for us there, there's very obvious value in having this type of robotic mobility um and you know i was a customer before i joined boston dynamics so uh just to see the improvement in you know what's essentially been 12 months from when I was first rigorously testing these robots on my job site to, um, to, to where we're at today. And that's the nice thing about hardware like a robot is you can basically have this, this base machine that you can just keep adding capabilities to with software updates. 
And, you know, it's, it's balance. Um, you know, we do a, we do a sales teleop experience, um, okay. so that people can actually drive the robot, um, at our headquarters who are interested in becoming a customer, but want to get some hands-on stuff and also see some of the new software. Um, and we have this exercise where, you know, we try to get them to get the robot to fall down and it just gets, it just gets harder and harder for them to do that to the point where if they can do it, we're all like cheering, um, so it's really about increasing the robustness, but we also accept the fact that there always will be falls. So there's self-right behavior. Um, there's there's the stair behavior that gets better and better and can now do graded stairs and open risers. I mean, you know, Isaac, I even noticed when we were at your job site, I mean, just the steps up into the trailer. I want to be able to walk this thing, you know, back into its kennel, you know, from the job site into the trailer. And oh, there you have it, riserless steps and graded steps. So it's important that we solve all these little problems because if there's one if there's one thing that doesn't work, your entire kind of autonomy ROI goes out right. the window, right? Like that's that's the real challenge here. And you know we're still we're still pushing at it. We're still you know offering improvements. Um, the arm is coming out next year for for on site manipulation. Um, you know we've got a lot of interesting things we're doing with docking and, and battery life improvement and self charging over the next year. Um, I think you can expect some really exciting things uh, from this product as we continue to grow with our customers. Awesome, so exciting. Uh, Isaac, I'll just go to you because you're on the job site. Obviously, you know, uh, this is a pilot, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of uh, changes that are gonna come to improve the product, but uh, what are the capabilities of Spot? Is this thing amazing or what? Yeah, to be honest, what we've seen so far is like, like as Brian said, like the places where Spot fell what we've seen so far, like, or recently was like the places where humans fell. <laughs> so it was like, for example, because from a job site, the trailer, the, there is snow, there is ice and everything. And we came one morning, there was like a patch of ice, like before we were able to put some salt on it and everything. And then like, um, so the robot like fell going to the job site. But then like, in the meantime, we saw people falling in the same place. So we're like, okay, I mean, it's clearly not worse than any human. So at least that's that's sorry this yeah. and like, yeah self right and stuff like that it makes a lot of sense no it is um and yeah as you mentioned like continuous development that's pretty crazy because yeah at first we had to go like and do the detour to get on, on the in a trailer because uh the, the stairs were not like the right parameters let's say for spot and at first and then right now that's like like if there's nothing it just continues and goes on the stair and there's no problem open risers uh grading and everything and he sees that's a stair, no problem. That's that's impressive. I mean, it's uh, no for, for us. It's uh, I mean, clearly, like now, like the next step is like bringing all the sensors to the next level, and not only the sensors, but also like all, what we're going to do with this data, because now that's a real uh, possibility. So, right on. Um, and you know, can I can I can we say that uh, robotics have a permanent uh, home at Pomelo? Uh, you know, in the future. <laughs> I'm seeing, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, we're, we're seeing robotic development as being part of what we're going to do in a pretty, let's say, short, medium term. I mean, it's uh, that's where construction is going right now. So, no, that's that's for sure. I mean, it's uh, it's it's still in the pilot project right now, but uh, I don't see any any reason why like uh, that would continue. So. Okay, awesome. Uh, Christian, I just wanted to, you know, key to uh, spot success is the improvements in visual documentation and all that. What are the exciting things that are coming on your side of the industry, your field that uh, uh, make you really excited or make Isaac, Isaac really, really excited to you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, well, for, first of all, to touch upon the, the last point as well, I, I think, yes, the capabilities and having seen this journey now for two years already, um, that capabilities are amazing, but what's also amazing is the updates that just come almost like a Tesla that's in the garage overnight. And then the next morning spot knows a new trick if you want. Uh, right. and that's really, really impressive of what the Boston dynamics team is pulling off there. And then in addition to that, um, the same goes for the developer side of things. So software partners like Holobuilder, um, our team constantly is able to do things that they weren't able to do. Let's say one day they're able to do on the next. And this goes back to that partnership, giving each other feedback back and forth, uh, which which is um, making making that a really uh, great journey, uh, as also the webinar title goes. Um, in terms of the kind of what's coming next, uh, not just for Holo Builder, but I guess for the construction progress management space as a whole. Um, and as earlier mentioned with the ROI, it's really uh, going now a step beyond just being able to see the site remotely. 
but also getting insights of what is being captured without even the need of a person looking at it through the application of machine learning on that data to get a progress report of what has changed, what has happened, uh, that you can visualize in a dashboard or in an Excel sheet if you want. And that's where spots capabilities are just off the charts. Uh, if you get these updates now on a weekly basis, because that's the, the frequency you capture, that's great. But you really want to get them on a daily basis or maybe even on a bi-daily basis. And that's where this ultimate capture machine, as I like to call spot and spot walk, is <laughs> the ability to get that data in the system just far more frequently uh, in order to, to again, increase that ROI system. And that's where that really comes into play. Awesome. So we're just uh, getting to the tail end of our conversation today. Uh, just wanted to touch on how uh, pa uh, Procore fits into all this. You know, Pomelo uses Procore as its construction management platform. So it's a central hub, uh, central uh, repository for all the data to analyze it and, and take it from there. Uh, but uh, I was going to go to you, Christian. You've been a partner of Procore for, since 2018. Um, what are you? What's your take on how how Procore fits into this whole process? Yeah, absolutely. It's so important that all these players in construction technology work together. All right. We, as you mentioned, we integrated in 2018. Uh, we've been collaborating since 2017. Um, and because of joint customers like Pomelo, we've been continuing to build out the integration to the degree where it is today. So, and and what what you see now after a few years of working together, you see this network effects, right? Because um, Holo Builder and Procore integrate, and now Holo Builder and Boston Dynamics have the integration. So basically, what that means for uh, end users like Isaac, he can now see the spot captured data uh, through Spotwalk in Procore through the embedded experience. So they kind of you you add one plus one, and it's more than more than two by far. And um, and that's really becomes a no-brainer that these tools all have to work together. No tool can stand by itself. Um, so if you see you walk the job site remotely and you see something on a 360-degree photo that you want to highlight, you make a markup in Holo Builder, but you don't don't want it to stay there. You want it to become an observation or an RFI within Procore, and with this integration, that's synced back and forth. So that's where really the true workflow efficiencies are won. And that's really where Isaac and his team and, and our other customers are pushing for, and, and the market demands these integrations. That's, uh, you know, you should be a spokesperson for uh, Procore. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, that's, uh, that's great. Isaac, I just uh, wanted to get your take on it uh, real quick. Yeah, that's exactly what like, I was thinking the same, because I mean, right now we're having multiple options coming to us now that like we're seeing multiple solutions with Whole Builder and Procore, and like everybody's giving their, their own solution, but all those solutions are kind of specialized in one area, let's say, and we don't want to multiply all the platforms. So it's kind of a tough call every time because yeah, there's a new solution, but like it's going to be one more platform. People have to log in on and everything. So adding right. the integration between Boston um, Whole Builder and Procore makes a lot of sense because people now are using it because like they're able to see the data in the same place they're managing their, their project. So for us, that's the big added value that we see because uh, by itself, standing alone, that's a little tougher to get people on board. And whether the platform we may be, it needs to be integrated in a central hub or some place where people can start from. So it's a uh, no, I mean, it's, it's it's great added value for us, the integration between both of you. That's awesome. Um, I was just gonna, we're gonna like uh, close out now. I, did you folks have any uh, final thoughts? I just wanted to apologize to the audience. I know uh, for some reason I muted myself and uh, my questions went uh, uh, mute, on mute for about 15, 20 minutes, but I hope the answers that uh, the, the folks gave were like, uh, you know, uh, were the meat <laughs> of the, the conversation. So my apologies for that, but did you, I just wanted to go around, uh, I'll start with you, Brian, any, any final words, anything uh, that you wanna say? How do we, you know, get in touch with you or if, uh, if people are interested in the product and we'll just go around for final ones. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that our greatest asset is is having robots on on real construction sites and learning from customers. So, you know, please do not hesitate if you're interested in this to reach out to me. Um, you know, Brian Ringley on LinkedIn uh, or Twitter, um, and we can get that conversation started. Uh, you can also go to BostonDynamics.com and communicate with us through there, and that'll get picked up as well. Um, I think there's still a lot to learn. Um, I think we, we, we're being clear eyed about the magnitude of the problems we're trying to solve, but, but we also see a clear path forward. 
That's awesome. Any books you can recommend on robotics? Anyone who's interested in uh, robotics that might come into mind? Oh my goodness! I wish I had prepared better for this. I have, like, <laughs> a, stack. I have a stack in the other room. Yeah, I'm actually reading one on um, the use of uh, Japanese construction robots in the '80s by some right. of the big big GCs who are actually our customers today, still pushing wow. innovation. Um, yeah, that's maybe that's a conversation we can have on social media after this. Sure. But yeah, a Absolutely. lot of lot of good lot of good work out there. Awesome. Uh, Christian, I'll go to you next. Uh, yeah, as mentioned, I think uh, just to sum it up, I believe there's no construction tech company out there that can stand by itself. And it's, it takes it takes a whole village to um, to, to make these novel and, and large projects happen. Um, just like our customers themselves, like Isaac and, and his team, they work with a ton of other companies to uh, realize some of these large scale projects out there. So the construction tech space just has to work the same way. Um, and I think this session really touched upon this philosophy really nicely. Um, and we see the tools work much closer and closer together. Well, it's really key that the construction technology works like a tool on the tool belt, like a hammer that always works. It's really important to push the envelope with projects like this one to really help the industry level up. Um, and, and I'm really excited to continue the journey with Isaac and Brian um, and you all in order to, uh, to kind of push the envelope and, envelope and continue the journey. I mean, I guess the sky's the limit, really. And Christian, we're so excited to have you as uh, partners, you know, Hollow Builders and the cutting edge of technology. A lot of shout outs from a lot of folks out there when I just uh, say your name. So keep up the great work. Uh, Isaac, I'll go uh, to you for your final comments as well. Uh, but I also know I'm big time into company culture and uh, the word love is a uh, formal of value. I just wanted to, uh, once you have commented, if you can tell me how that came about and how that impacts your, uh, your, uh, your, uh, you know, your culture. Yeah, exactly. Because um, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the love value it was a pretty, pretty interesting one when it, it showed up. I mean, Pierre Pomelo came with this, and like he was pretty insisting on using it. And you know, like the guys in construction was like, "Yeah, no, we're not going to use that. We're going to use quality. We're going to use whatever." So, and I was like, "No, guys, like love is something we do. That is something we live every day in this company. So it's like love of like yeah, everybody else around you, people you work with, but it's also love of like." What you do like a level right. like it's, it's like kind of passion style of everything we do in the company and it, it fits really great in this company so i mean yeah at first we were kind of like chuckling a little bit and then we just understood like yeah you're, you're right that's all right i mean i don't know if we're the only company that has love as a value but that's all right we all live along with it and it's uh, it, yeah it's pretty, it's pretty great <laughs> awesome and your final thoughts on uh, the partnership the collaboration yeah, I mean, we're seeing very, very nice stuff for the future. And I mean, seeing what we've seen so far for the past six months, uh, I mean, that, that's a future. So for us, I mean, there's no question about it. So I guess like we're we're interested in seeing what, where it's going to evolve, how it's going to turn out and like yeah. seeing what Christian and Holber is going to bring us like uh, from their hat like next year and then what's going on with Boston Dynamics, what they're going to start like doing next year with their, their other robots and stuff. So. I mean, this is for us, that's, that's very exciting, so. Awesome, awesome. So uh, folks, uh, that's about all the time we have. I know some folks have asked uh, if they can ask questions, but please feel free to put them in the comments or reach out to uh, Brian or Christian or Isaac on LinkedIn uh, and uh, take it from there. So I hope the session was informative, helpful, and you were inspired and are more knowledgeable about robotics and will learn to love them. Uh, a big thank you to Isaac, Brian, and Christian for, and your esteemed organizations for joining us, for sharing your findings for the improvement of our industry. We're cheering you on and wishing your collaboration the best of success. Again, my apologies to the audience for some of the muted questions that you didn't hear from me, but uh, hopefully the, the context was there for you. So uh, any uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. And uh, thank you. That, thank you. And that's a wrap, folks. Check out our entire How We Build Now video series at Procore.com. Have a great day and be safe out there. Sanjeev out. Thanks. Thank you.